Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Greg and Mitch Show. Tonight's episode of the Greg and Mitch Show is brought to you by Massive Supplements and First Form Supplements. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to smash your greens daily, and if you're doing 75 hard, fucking crush it. So we're developing a trend when we hang out for a weekend, is that the podcast is the very, very last thing that we do. Because it's what? It's midnight on our last night here in Vegas. Yep. I'm out of here at six in the morning. So we're gonna make this uh <laughs> we're gonna make this be a two to three hour episode, crash in the middle of the night, and I'll fucking rest on the the flight home tomorrow. <clears throat> then I got jujitsu to teach and life goes on. But this has been a fun fucking weekend. Yeah. People like the Greg and Mitch show. So we're gonna recap the uh the, the tournament that we just did, the high rollers grappling event. And then uh, we have a bunch of shit to unpack, as usual. A weekend with Mitch is always a, an interesting way to spend two or three days. Yeah, no, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so we flew in here on Friday, and uh, we met up. We met? Did we meet up? No, we didn't meet up at the airport. You met up here mm -hmm. at the Airbnb, at this cool Airbnb that we're staying at. And uh, for those of you watching the podcast, you can see our background is a uh, terrarium, right? Is that what they call it? I don't know exactly what you call these. It's like a uh, like an indoor outdoor greenhouse. Yeah. You can see they did an addition on the house <clears throat> and just pushed a roof out like another twenty feet, and then put a pond inside here. A bunch of plants. There's turtles and frogs. It's tree, fucking rad. Tree frogs and shit. <clears throat> yeah, it's super cool. They got koi pond and some pretty tall greenery. I like it. I like the height. The openness of it. No, I, I, as soon as I walked in here, I was thinking about how could I incorporate something like this back home. Right. But I don't know. I mean, it probably has to be the right environment. Because like, if you did this in Virginia, it'd be a fucking sauna. You know? Well, I mean, it gets a, a hundred degrees here. What, I mean. Yeah, it's true, right? So, And it stayed pretty chill, like cool in here. Like compared to the, you know, outside. It's, yeah, that's it's true. Nice in here. Maybe with the fans running and the water and stuff, it's yeah. actually. I dig it, man. I dig it. It's that indoor outdoor feel, and I think it the having the high high ceilings like that makes it feel that that much more open. And and I was telling Ray like like as we were talking about you know making one of these, and I kind of like how because I was thinking skylights at first, and mm -hmm. I was thinking. Now that might let too much sun in, you know, it's like, that's what I'm saying. Like these windows go all the way up to the ceiling. So it lets plenty of sunlight in, but, and, and, you know, and it's tall, so it feels open, but then it's like you have shade as well from the roof. Yeah. yeah. So it's, so it probably doesn't get that hot. So that new show that I told you about, it's a YouTube channel called my self reliance. Okay. That dude that does all his own stuff off grid. You're right. He built a dome greenhouse, but only half of it. Let's light through, and then the other half he like shaded. So, as the sun goes overhead, he positioned that thing correctly <clears throat> to let the like optimal amount of sunlight in. Nice. And I guarantee you, the same thing would be if you were to build something like this. Take that into account, right? Like, where the sun's going to shine through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super cool though. I love uh, like it's just a instantly calming effect when you walk in here. You know. Uh, it's just nice to, it's nice to be in nature sort of, but you're still, you know, chilling in a, in a house, especially after walking <laughs> on the strip downtown Vegas. Yeah. This is very much the opposite. And bro, like I've noticed that the last couple of times I've been to Vegas, I don't know what it is about the energy. It's, I just don't enjoy being downtown on the strip, walking through casinos, everyone's drunk, there's smoke everywhere. I can't, and the thing is, I like crowds. I like people. I like concerts. I like jujitsu tournaments. So it's not just that there's a hundred people around. It's just something fucking something exhausting. Something specific about Vegas. Yeah, I don't know what it is, man. But every time I go to Vegas, I'll spend a day here. And then I'm like, all right, I'm ready to get the fuck out of here. It's weird because I think, you know, people let their freak flag fly a little bit more in Vegas. You uh -huh. know, it's just got that, that, uh, that Sin City feel, and it's just like, you know, what happens in Vegas uh, stays in Vegas. It's fucking Vegas, man. You know, or, or just people just wanting to let loose for a little bit, and, you know, they all wear a fucking 
little slutty dress or Bro, yeah it's like fucking you know, halloween dress, dude. yeah like people dress up play they play almost like they dress up like rich people or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah not my bag and like i mean it was cool we came down here for a jiu-jitsu event that's not on the strip it's it's outside of town a, a few miles and the truth is man i would love to keep coming down here doing those events and supporting those guys and uh, collaborating with them. High Rollers BJJ. That yeah, is. It, it was fucking rad. Cool guys, cool facility. But I'll probably just stay off the strip. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, No, I get it. I mean. I would, to tell you the truth, I'd rather kick it here with everybody. Oh, for sure. But the thing is, we're down here with like your crew and your A lot your of them, it's their stepdad. first time being in Vegas. so You want to experience yeah, all that Yeah, I stuff. could give a fuck less if I ever go to the strip again. You know? <laughs> yeah. I've been here, done that, you know. Um, but I feel like it's something, especially if you've never been to Vegas, that's what you want to go see. Of course. You know, yeah. and, and the people watching is something else here for sure. So, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that they got to enjoy that but yeah for next time if it you know we just come here for that veterans fucking tournament in november mm -hmm. um you know i don't give a fuck if we go down there at all do you know what surprised me tonight is how many fucking babies were in strollers and i mean we didn't get off the strip till <sighs> what 11 o'clock or something yeah and there's like tons of kids and babies in strollers and <clears throat> i don't know there's and also lunatics walking around. Yeah, lunatics and fucking everybody's drunk. Like, I just feel like that would be the last place I'd want to hang out with my children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vegas. And it's Sunday night at 11. Yeah, but like, <laughs> isn't it the, the city that never sleeps or some shit That's like New that? New York. That's New York? Okay. I don't know my city. I think Ve names. Vegas is just, more just so. Just Sin City? I think Vegas is more so th that way than, than anywhere else, though. Because... It's not like, like New York, you go for business deals and shit. And there are business deals here and there. But like the, the, well, I would say the majority of people downtown Vegas are fucking raging, you know? Yeah. And we just tried to get a coffee about 20 minutes ago. <clears throat> and we were told all the Starbucks on the strip used to be 24 hours, but they're not anymore because of COVID. So apparently late night coffees. If you follow the COVID science, traps. if you follow the science, late night coffees are potentially a super spreader. So for sure, not it has nothing to do with the fact that we just saw a Chris Angel show and we were in a room with 600 people sitting next to each other. But late <clears throat> night coffees stay away from those. Chris Angel show is fucking weird. <laughs> that yeah. was not uh, what I've I've always been a fan of Chris Angel like my whole like life as long as i've known chris angel i've i've seen him on tv and some of his illusions and shit and you know obviously he dresses weird and he's like you know into that whole Gothic fucking look 80s or whatever. rock like you know what i mean 80s yeah, yeah, rock yeah. band look um, and, he, and he even kind of embraces that a little bit when he's like welcome to vegas oh yeah <laughs> you welcome know? to vegas <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and he's wearing like, fucking oh, tight leather pants and shit, and it's like, you know, dude, w what's up with you? <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, I felt like he uh, was going through a midlife crisis, bro. And like I told you after the show, is like, because I've seen every time we come to Vegas, we usually see like a Cirque du Soleil or whatever. Yeah, and those shows are fucking rad. And I think the reason I like those so much is because it's just like those people are the pinnacle of their athletic ability yeah so it doesn't matter if they're gymnasts i mean we've even seen there's some that like do skateboarding tricks or bmx stuff well that guy that was in the show tonight for five 15 seconds just holding you know yeah. the handstand and shit yeah like those dudes he was are like savages yeah i was like wow that guy's definitely you know top of his high game. level yeah you know, super athlete type shit and uh yeah, but that was also weird. It's like, why is this in the show for 20 seconds? It <laughs> has no other purpose. Yeah, I wonder what that guy's annual salary is. Right. To do that twice a night for You're going to do a handstand seconds. and then go into you know, an L sit and yeah. then just hold it there for 10 seconds as we wheel you to the right. <laughs> <laughs> That's my role in the Chris Angel Mind Freak show. But the weird thing about... I don't know, man. I don't get like, I like concerts like metal concerts, right? Cause there's no, a metal concert. It's just, there's a pit. And then outside of the pit, there's people that watch and it's just kind of 
do your thing. Whatever you feel like doing, go do it, you know? But this is like, all right, everybody, stand up. <laughs> Put your hands together. Let me hear you clap. Let me hear you clap. And everybody's doing it together, and I just feel I off. didn't hear you, Vegas. Yeah, let me ask you again. <laughs> How are you tonight, Las Vegas? I'm like, dude, ugh. Like, yeah. uh, ugh, like I don't know, man. eat it up, That's though, not dude. my energy. The sheep will want direction. They want to be <laughs> told what to do. And so, but here's the thing, though. All the antics aside, like if the magic tricks were fucking on point and rad, whatever. You know what I mean? Like I can deal with a little theater. I saw one magic trick that I liked. I agree. I saw one thing and it was the pigeons. Yeah. And it's like to, he spent fucking 30 minutes talking, like showing all his awards and, you know, his little highlight reel back, back in 89, <laughs> one magician of the year, whatever. But like it seemed like. You know, that was the majority of the time, and it's like voted best show in Vegas and all this shit, the buildup. And I was like, oh man, this is going to be maybe pretty cool. And then it was just not cool. It was weird as fuck and super sexual. And there's like half the audience is kids. And uh, yeah, it just was fucking weird to me. And it made me think, like, this guy's like having like a midlife crisis or something. Like, what the fuck is going on with you? And there's probably people listening right now, like, Fuck you guys, because <laughs> they're big magic fans oh, or whatever. I, you know, but for, here's the thing. for sure, also- I have a a uh, uh, OG of mine that is an ins- aspiring magician, and I know for a fact he loves Chris Angel. And the thing is, it's like Kyle Ludwig, I believe, is his uh, Instagram handle. He's a firefighter in New York. I guess magic's just Shout not out. really my thing. Like I've never been into card tricks or like fucking trying to make shit disappear. Dude, magic, magic's cool. No, it's cool. But I've never, it's just never been my thing. So maybe it's still not my thing, you know? Dude, that, but like you said, 90% of the show was fucking theatrical and fucking weird, stupid shit. And then like 10% was magic tricks and only like 2% of that was fucking cool. Yeah. And then the other thing that I always wonder about magic tricks, like, you know, when you used to watch David Copperfield on TV as a kid. And they would like make, we're going to make a semi truck disappear. And they mm-hmm. put a cloth up and then they pull it down and the truck's gone. Yeah. But that's all like stage camera angles yeah. and movement of uh, like things are on wheels that move. Like street magicians are cool. Yeah. Like I want to, I want to be able to stand there and fucking watch you do it mm-hmm. and be amazed. Yeah. And I was with those pigeons. He kept pulling a, fucking pigeon after pigeon after yeah. pigeon i mean how many how many pigeons did he pull out of his shirt and his cloth probably off? 10 probably 10 right yeah and the thing is like you would see those pigeons on him somewhere you'd think and the thing is that they're not a prop yeah that's a, that's a living breathing animal that has to to a certain extent cooperate with what we're doing here right right and you saw one of them flew off in the wrong direction because yeah. I don't know if you look behind you, they had that. They had a red. Uh, it looked like a Japan flag. Looked, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you that Kamikaze is like Kamikaze pigeons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they fucking when he when he they pop out of his sleeve and they fly off. They're obviously trained to fly to that red dot because there was a person up there capturing them. And Dude, then one flew to the oh guitar. My. Did you see that? I didn't. But did you fucking see the guy? behind the tree that was like the pigeon whisperer oh yeah, yeah, yeah i was like going back and forth i'm like i don't know if this is like a you know because magicians want you to look over here while they're doing this right yeah and much like politicians but uh <laughs> but like i'm like trying not to focus on this pigeon whisperer guy that's dressed up like a fucking some sort of uh you know, sexual furry animal, <laughs> and which went fitting with the show. But what's the way. that? What was that? Is that called muffing? Uh, no, fur, fur, furry, furry, furry. I think it's wrong. I think that, but there are people that furries. Furries. That's what they're called. That dress up in giant stuffed animal costumes and yeah. get sexual with each I, other. Yeah, I don't know. They like rub fucking costumes together. <laughs> get, I don't know. Maybe there's a slot where you can pull your dick out. There's a. Uh, it's it's funny that reminds me of a story is that whenever people lose their suitcases flying into SeaTac, they always we lost our suitcase yeah. several times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. But we uh, they come to the police because the airlines direct them to go to the police and file a report. And it's like, well, there's a good chance that they lost your bag, but 
for insurance purposes, you still got to file a report. So to file a report, you have to give an itemized item of what's in the suitcase. And uh, so this guy and his girlfriend come up and they're like, all right, well, what, here's the form. Got to do an itemized list of everything in the suitcase and the value of each item. And he looks at me and I can instantly tell he's like, um, you, you have to know what's in the bag. I said, well, police reports are for insurance purposes. And in order for them to pay out whatever was in the bag, yes, itemized list of each item, what it's worth. And he goes, let's just say they're like party props. And I said, party props is probably not going to work. And he goes, you know, I just don't, like we went to an event and it was kind of, you know, I'm not really comfortable talking about what's in the bag. So I think we'll just, we'll just call this a loss. We're good. Don't worry about it. And walked out (laughs) (laughs) to this day. It's like, it's just a bag full of fucking dildos or something yeah, like probably. <laughs> it's just all of like him as like some cuck shit or like a slave, you know, <laughs> yeah. he's got like a ball gag yeah. and like a butt plug and it's yeah, just like, yeah. says his name on it. And shit. <laughs> so it's like, I uh, can't talk about that. And then everybody else, you know, says, just oh, I, everybody good. else is like, um, there was a $50,000 Rolex in yeah. there. There was, Twenty thousand dollar diamond earrings. Mm-hmm. There was. I'm like, get the fuck Flo- out of here. They're Floyd dude. Mayweather all of a sudden, <laughs> Fly- but they're flying coach Southwest <laughs> Spirit. Yeah. You got even worse, dude. Yeah, I've got a fifty thousand dollar Rolex in there, sir. You're you're in row forty. <laughs> let's, let's be realistic. Do uh, yeah, Spirit Airlines. I would never fly Spirit, just for the simple fact that as a police officer who has an airport inside of our jurisdiction. <laughs> the fucking lines at the spirit counter are one of the most common places you get called to for disturbances. Really? But yeah. Like, fuck you. No, fuck you. Like, and they're like having issues and problems, uh, disturbance at spirit airline. Like, Dude, Oh, I shocking. Fucking, shocking. I, I fucking cannot stand airline people anymore. Dude. There's like c- uh, just a couple groups of people that are just fucking insane with the masks and shit. And they just, drive me to the point of violence like the fucking flight attendants of uh, the airline people the tsa fucking fucks man the the restaurant like people the fucking these teachers with pushing shit lately all kinds of propaganda and everything like indoctrinating kids like dude bro that's teachers, why that's why i pulled my all of my kids are out of public these school motherfuckers system. are getting on my last fucking nerve did you see the post I posted a couple of days ago about the genderbred person? Uh, I don't know. It's like this. Uh, here's the thing. I mean, we talk about it all the time. Put your dick wherever you want to put it. Cut it off if you want to cut it off. Fuck men. Fuck women. Like n- nobody cares what you do with your life, what you do with your body. But why do you have to preach and teach people about these kind of lifestyles to five and six year olds? Yeah. Like what? What not- do we? What? What's the point of that? I don't want you telling my kids that they should fuck men or fuck women or any of that shit. I want you to teach them about how to read and how to do fucking math problems. So this gender bred person is exactly what you would think it is. It's, it's this little, like, it's just this little fucking thing that was hung on the wall in the public schools in a, uh, a counselor's office. And it's talking about how gender identity works and then how your sexual desires aren't necessarily tied to your gender identity because it's your brain that determines your identity. And then it has a little thing like over the genitals. And it's like, but this determines your sexual attraction. It's just, it's just maddening, dude. Like yeah. what the fuck does my six year old daughter need to see anything like that for? What's yeah. the value in that? Oh, well, it's teaching about diversity and acceptance. Like, no, you're just fucking confusing you're, them. You're confusing kids and you're taking their focus off of what they should be learning and they're fucking filling their minds with a bunch of bullshit. Mm-hmm. And here's what I learned about public schools because I pulled my younger two out last year and it, they went into kindergarten and second grade and I saw how much they grew, right? How much smarter they became, how much like more efficient they got at learning. But my oldest daughter was in all AP classes so we we're like, she's doing good. We'll, we're going to let her uh, stick and stay in public school. So then this year I'd had too much. And I said, you know what? We're pulling you from public school too. And then she went and tested. She's below her grade level. Like I said, well, wait, she was in all AP classes. And the guy goes, 
most kids coming out of public school AP classes are actually still below the standard of most private schools. Mm. Like, oh, great. Okay. So she's a week into it. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> but, but do you got to get your food? Is it here? It's, a, it's, it's on its way. Okay. Um, we ordered Uber Eats. So I, I am going to own this as a dad. We were in the Halloween store and they had a Ouija board. Like just out on a shelf, right? And she's like, oh, what's a Ouija board? Can I have one? I'm like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Buy one. I guess, and correct me if I'm wrong or if you're aware of this, but I guess Ouija boards are like- Devils? Yeah, considered yeah. super satanic and connects you with like evil spirits and demons and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember fucking around with them as a little kid. Did you move them? I didn't think that I did. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's easy to be like, oh my God, it's moving itself. But what's really happening? I don't fucking know what's really happening. But she went to school, and it's a Christian private school. Did she brought it with her? No, she talked about it at the lunch table, and she's like, I talked to my dead cat on my Ouija board. That got a... <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that got us a call from the principal, and uh, and I love the principal. He's fucking rad. In fact, I want to have him on my, my on my podcast. But uh, I drove in there, me and Jenny, and we sat down. And he's like, "Yeah," like he was even kind of laughing. He's like, "Hey, I could handle this if you want me to, and talk to Siler about it, or if you want to." But here, we don't we don't do that kind of stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Okay, I'm Roger that." I said, "I'm 40 years old, and I'm sitting in the principal's office, still feeling like I'm in trouble." You know. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, do you know you uh, bought your daughter a... Uh, a gateway to hell. <laughs> direct line with Satan. <laughs> and she's uh, encouraging the other kids to speak with their dead pets. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, damn it. Through Satan, all things and, are possible. And, and Jenny even told me, she's like, I knew you shouldn't have fucking bought that thing. And I was like, well, why didn't you say something? She goes, I can't tell you anything. You're not going to listen to me. And I was like, yeah, you might be right. <laughs> it's, it's like your staff trying to direct you and you're like... Do I fucking work for you or do you work for me? Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't remember asking for your opinion. <laughs> no. So let's talk about the jujitsu event. That's the whole reason we came down here. And it was, uh, it was awesome. So just, yeah, tell like, I guess it'd be better coming from you. I have a pretty good understanding of what it was, but you, you guys put it together and collaborated and made it happen. So, yeah. So the high rollers, BJJ, they're a, uh, what would you call them? A, uh, not an event. Uh, yeah, I would call it an event. It's not like a tournament that you can go like sign up for and, and compete. It's it's more like they put together shows with super fights. Yeah, what's that called though? They're a, they're a pla not a platform, but a, god damn. I'm it's right on the tip of your tongue? Yeah. I don't know what word you're looking promotion. for. Promotion. Promotion, okay. They're a promotion and they promote uh, jujitsu tournaments where the competitors smoke weed before the match and then, you know, they compete regular jujitsu, no gi jujitsu, and the winners of the tournaments will win like a pound of weed. And so everything is kind of based around that. They so they compete and everything is around weed or whatever. Um so one of the owners had reached out to us because they had thought about doing a cops versus stoners event or whatever and and asked us if we'd be interested in and partnering with them and you know we could do it to raise money for our charity and stuff like that and i was like hell yeah that sounds awesome and uh i'm all about it so and i was like yeah i'd be down to compete too and they were super pumped about that and uh so they were like yeah we'll make you the the team captain for the cops and you know we'll find someone to to be the team captain of the stoners and we'll you know set up a a little super fight thing event and it'll be fun. And I was like, hell yeah, that sounds awesome. And, uh, so we picked, we tried to get like guys from the adopt a cop program that have, you know, graduated with, got their blue belt. So we can kind of put them on display. Like, okay. You know what I mean? But I don't think we got anybody. Um, there's, uh, well, the adopt a cop program is what a year old. Yeah. So I guess you may have some guys that are, potentially coming up on that blue belt oh no we already have a few blue belts but we couldn't like get, just because we have them doesn't mean they're willing to come and compete in vegas on a on a, a random sunday night or on a, saturday well, on a, on yeah, a, yeah. kind of a big stage you know and also like the type of event around weed maybe they don't feel comfortable 
or or their departments. Yeah, or they're worried about how they would, you know, being yeah. in that light. I don't know. I would just imagine. But uh but anyway, we had a a good showing. Uh we wanted Greg Lappin to come and compete, but he and he said he was initially, but he then, to, then he, he backed to, out, huh? He had to back out for something. Oh, know. very very interesting. I mean, you know, Greg showed up. <laughs> the big Greg showed up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh and he's an avid listener of the Endless Endeavor, so I'm sure he will hear this. And then I'll get a call and be like, bro, what the fuck is this? Yeah, I don't know why. I can't remember what, what his excuse was. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it ended up being an awesome uh, awesome you know lineup. We got a bunch of cool people to show up. And uh, my friend Cam Boyd, uh, which a lot of my, you know, a lot of my followers know who he is, K9aholics. Um, you know, he used to be a police officer. He's been training, um, quite a bit at a coastal BJJ. He's a blue belt. Oh, I thought he was still with the department. He's no, done with no, that. No, huh? no, yeah, no. Okay. He, I encouraged him to quit the police department. Good. That makes me happy. Dude. Yeah. And, uh, he's doing canine holics and he's getting into another, uh, business adventure, business venture. He's a young entrepreneur and, uh, you know, I encouraged him to get out of the police and, 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 pursue being his own boss and his own businesses and everything because he's the type of person that has the drive and work ethic to and discipline to be successful you know owning a business is by far the most stressful fucking crazy non-stop issues you know just constant problem solving but it's so rewarding if you know, you can endure the the grind of that and the bullshit and, you know, and and with some luck, you know, like it can be the best, most rewarding thing to be your own boss and your own company, your own business. And if you do it right, you know, can set you up big time. Whereas, you know, they were dangling like uh, having the dog, oh, stay on the department and two years we'll get you a dog, you know, and just dangling that along trying to keep him trapped there yeah and i was like dude in two years you could be fucking wealthy you know what i mean like so just take that leap of faith and and get out and pursue it and he's already making more money than that's he yeah did. and me too you know and i i talk to, i talk about this a lot because a lot of our listeners are cops and a lot of our listeners are cops that are fed up with what's happening in the country and what they're being asked to do and how police are being utilized and all that shit that we've talked about a thousand times. But I also get a lot of emails are like, bro, like I don't like this and I feel stuck, but this is how I provide for my children and I don't have another option. And I mean, I've even got a lot of emails that are, people are like, I have to get the vaccine, even though it's, it's everything I stand against. I don't want it. I don't believe in it. But uh, it's how I feed my children. I have to. And it's like, you don't have to do anything. You right. know, you don't have to do fucking anything. Telling yourself that is telling yourself a lie. And telling yourself that is planting that seed in your mind that somebody else controls you and that you have to answer to somebody else. You have to do what somebody else wants you to do. Like, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have to kind of endure some hardships or maybe do a job that you don't necessarily like to feed your kids. Cause like when you have commitments and you have responsibilities, you got to do what you got to do. But at the same time, it should never go against like fundamentally what you believe morally ethic and ethically. Cause you're just basically admitting that I'm a slave to these people. Like I would die before I would take the vaccine. And it's like what we talked about yesterday is like, it's not even, it's not even related to, Fear. what the vaccine could potentially do to me or if it has like side effects that I'm worried about or blood clots or, or fluid around your heart, like the different shit that you're reading about to me, that's all a moot point. I don't give a fuck if it's good for me or bad for me. The fact that you're telling me that I have to do something or else better do this or else, bro, that's like schoolyard bowling tactics. Yeah. Like straight fucking bullying. Dude, and it's one thing like if it fucking made sense, but there's no logic behind this shit. You know what I mean? Well, like, and there's science to, that says like, you know, you natural immunity, you're just going to ignore that and like silence it on Instagram, not show the hashtag because it doesn't go with your narrative and like what you want and the control that you want to have over yeah. the people. Even though the science says like I'm, 
fucking way more protected from naturally having immunity, you know, and getting over COVID. But you, but because like they want that control, it's fuck that. Take that's, the vaccine that's, anyway. That's why I'm resistant to yeah, it. No. If they just put the vaccine out there and said, hey, do your research. This is the pros. This is the cons. You decide. Cool. Then it wouldn't, it wouldn't make you raise an eyebrow and there wouldn't be so much concern around it. But when you have to manipulate then or incentivize or now even coerce, like mandate. Yeah. It started with just, hey, you should do this. Then it moved to, hey, we'll give you this if you do it, like dangling a little carrot. You can go into this restaurant and get free dinner. You can get this or you can get that. That started to get kind of weird. Like, yeah. okay, why are you incentivizing so much, right? And now their tone, and Joe Biden's patience is wearing thin. Uh, yeah, ba Biden's patience is wearing thin, so you better do what he fucking says. Yeah. Like, fuck your patience and fuck you. And that's the thing, man. Like, that's been me my whole life. I still remember like the last time I, I legitimately got bullied in the seventh grade. And I wasn't one of those kids that grew up, oh, I got picked on all the time and I had it hard. Like I, I stood my ground for the most as a little kid and grew into a person that I was pretty happy with. But I still remember to this day, the last time I was bullied and I was like, never again is someone going to fucking treat me like this. And I don't care if you're a fucking kid in the seventh grade hallway or the president of the United States. Go fuck yourself. And dude, everybody feels this way. Everybody feels this way. You know, like Andy Frisella talked about it when I did his podcast. He's like, dude, because he is connected and interacts with a lot of people. And he goes, from what I see with my own two eyes, 80% of Americans believe what we believe. Like, let me do me, you do you, and I just want to be left the fuck alone. And we're being led to believe that we're the problem. We're the minority. You guys hear that bell? Food is here. That's Part of the Endless Endeavor podcast is you get to do real life with us. Yep. And Mitch ordered hamburgers. Uber Eats. From Shake Shack. Yeah. So we will be right back. All right, so our intermission is complete. We ate a bunch of super healthy foods and we're back. But uh, no, I was just saying like, the numbers don't add up. Like, there's not as many people supporting all the bullshit as we're being led to believe. You get the ones that are virtue signaling on Instagram and you get the celebrities that have bought off on the bullshit and the politicians pushing all this shit. But real day-to-day -day people, like I did that, I know we talked about it a little bit, but I put it on my Instagram. I said, I have 90,000 followers. I wanna know if one person that follows me voted for Joe Biden. And dude, it's like, oh, well, you're a conservative guy and those type of people wouldn't follow you. Dude, that's a fucking football stadium full of people. There's, it's impossible for, out of uh, just a, a sample of 90,000 people, for someone to not be like, no, I fucking, I like Biden. I voted for, for Biden. Zero. Like I said, I know of one person that voted for him that, and it was because they hated Trump. Yeah. And so, I mean, I don't know how far down all these fucking rabbit holes you want to go about the election fraud and, and all the numbers being skewed and stuff. Dude, but you're telling me Gavin Newsom. That's what I'm saying. After being fucking, after being like having enough support to be recalled, you gained like 20% yeah, of the get vote. The Are you fuck fucking kidding out me? Out of here. And dude, you don't have to be, it doesn't matter like how you politically align yourself if you're on the left or you're on the right. When you look into Gavin Newsom's eyes and you listen to him talk, you see his mannerisms, you see how he just, his energy and how he conducts himself. He's a fucking sleazy piece of shit. Everybody on both sides of the aisle can see that. And he just got fucking reelected by in a landslide. He's fucking new, uh, Pelosi's, Nancy, nephew. Pelosi's nephew. That's what I'm saying, dude. Corruption. Th there's nothing about her that isn't corrupt. And that motherfucker is hated by so many fucking Californians. But they so, said 20% of the people in the recall were Democrats. So the recall like signatures. There's a guy I follow on Instagram. I think his, he's like called big Mike. Have you ever heard of this dude? He like, he grows, he's a, he has a million followers and he grows marijuana in California and he's like a big time. That's what he does. Right. 
So he posted on his Instagram, like, vote to keep Newsom in office. We need him or some, something like that, right? And uh, so it's a marijuana page, right? It's not, it's not a fucking, like, conservative 2A group. It's, right. a, it's a marijuana page. 100% of the comments are, fuck you. Newsom's a piece of shit. Thousands and thousands of comments. I was looking through them. Yeah. Every single one of them was like, are you out of your fucking mind? Fuck that guy. He's a piece of shit. And I was like, oh, to see that from a fucking page that's about marijuana? What the hell's that noise? Mom, is that your phone? I'm hearing a phone. We're good. Uh, <laughs> we'll get into that next. <laughs> Mitch's Mitch's lack of patience. <laughs> I saw it full fledged this front and center this weekend. Dude, the marijuana kept me from from losing your shit, losing my shit totally. So yeah, that was the whole point of that rant, though. The numbers don't make sense if your eyes are open and you're honest with yourself. There's there's fucking corruption going on at every level, dude. And it's and it's, it's fucking it's scary. To think that, like, the elections, the one thing, the one legal, like, like bit of power that we, the people, hold mm -hmm. is, like, if the majority of us are, like, fuck this dude, you know, we're going to vote your ass out, but we don't actually have the ability yeah, to it's do all that because it's all fucking corrupt and bullshit, and, the, you know, they use the mail-in voting, you know, and, and these electronic fucking, like, people are watching it and watch 300,000 votes go disappear for Larry Elder. And oh, they were that like, shit happened this time that around happened too? this time on live fucking TV. And they were like, Oh, it was a human error glitch, a glitch. Don't, don't worry about that. And dude, like, like, are you fucking kidding me, man? It, how much more this has to happen be and before people are like, you know what? Fuck you. Dude, at what we're dragging you out of our capital. Cause it's not yours. It's ours. And, that's, and fucking putting you in pillories in the street. And, and, and at some point, I was thinking about this earlier, they're going to have to address, like, because if the issue itself is the majority of people do not fucking trust these elections and the way you're conducting them. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to have a vote on, like, how we're going to move about this because we don't trust the voting system. Yeah. So something with the voting system needs to fucking change and quickly, you know, so that it's transparent, it's fucking secure, like, you know what I mean? Fuck this digital shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it, there's no reason why we can't, and, and I'm telling you, it's going to be necessary because if they're just, I don't know how long they're going to get away with people accepting, you know, well, we'll just come these elections, we'll vote them out. And it's like, what aren't you seeing? Or what are you not understanding? These elections themselves are the fucking problem. Well, and something I've been saying a lot is that the current system and, and the way that it's structured and the way that our elections work and that it, how our laws are structured has brought us to this point right here. So something's fundamentally broken. You can't just say, hey, let's just vote someone else in next time. No, 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 no. The system that brought us to where we're at today is obviously fundamentally broken in some ways. So we need to have a massive overhaul. We need to have some massive changes if we don't want to find ourselves where we're at right here, right now. It's like a relationship, dude. Or, you know, it's like the definition of insanity. You, you keep doing the same thing and you expect something different to occur. That's where we're at in this. And I honestly think one of the biggest things that would fundamentally change politics is term limits. I who who I, doesn't believe in term limits? Nancy Pelosi's on like her 16th fucking year. Joe Biden. Yeah, we saw that 50. like 50 fucking years. Like, and I don't think that's like a partisan issue. Hey, do you think a, a fucking old sleaze bag should be fucking in D.C. for f 50 plus years? Dude, and how much shit like Joe Biden's been fucking, you know, hit with plagiarism and fucking all kinds of bullshit throughout his career. And it, it never stops. And he, he drove Mack trucks and like just it's just lie after lie. We just let them lie and then we let them get away with it. And you get a pass. Like, if you tell a lie as an elected official, I don't care how small it is. 
like, oh, yeah, yeah, I used to work there. No, 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 no. You didn't used to fucking work there. Show me your CDL. When did you drive trucks? Like, show me that. Well, he talked about being, like, the top in his class and all that stuff, too, and all that was bullshit, and it's like, everything the fucking guy said is a lie. If you are found to be lying to your constituents, it should be an automatic fucking uh, dereliction of duty, and you're removed from office. Or if you don't do what you said you were going to do. <laughs> oh, fuck, bro. I mean, there, there's a video going around right now, and it is Pelosi, Biden, Fauci. Uh, Kamala. Yeah, Kamala, and they're like... All talking about the vaccine. No one can tell you to put a vaccine into your body. Uh, oh, Jen Psaki, too. She's like, that. you know, the federal government, we actually don't have the authority to mandate you put something in your body. That's not legal. Mm -hmm. And Nancy Pelosi's like, it's against your right to privacy. And yeah. it's like... And they say all this shit when Trump's in office, and then the day they're elected... Just 180 degree flip flop. How is anybody like, hey, this wasn't fucking 10 years ago? Because I know people will grow. This and, was 10 months ago. Yeah. Like you and said this 10 months ago. there's video footage of it. It's irrefutably true. And nobody, I mean, they won't even take questions. That motherfucker won't even take questions. He just turns around and shuffles away. Mm -hmm. Always told not to answer any questions today. Turns around and walks away. Like he has a puppet master. And, and he's even been getting called out on that now. Yeah. They're like, who's in charge? Mm -hmm. Like, if he's told he can't take questions, who told him that? Yeah, one of the senators was asking, like, who has the power at the White House to cut him off? Yeah, yeah, because, that's what I'm talking about. I saw that. Because, you know, several times, and, you know, I think he was talking to the Secretary of the State or something, and he's just like, he's like, uh, no, Joe Biden speaks for himself or whatever. And they're like, are you telling me that you haven't seen this happen yeah. where – He's talking, and the, they just cut him off, and it says White House fucking whatever, like on the screen. And Joe Biden's mid-sentence, the president of the United States mid-sentence, and they just cut him off. That's happened several times now. Yeah, so what the fuck is so going on? So what's going on? Who's making that call? Who's the person that presses the button? And they just... Uh, I, uh, I Joe Biden, speak, uh, Joe I Biden said speaks it. for himself. He speaks for himself. And, like, dude, all these motherfuckers, I don't care what level of fucking, like part of the corruption you're that guy just simply saying that when he knows it's not true mm -hmm. just simply saying that you should get fucking beaten dude you know it's fucking completely out of control and that's why i'm having dreams of fbi hrt team fucking swarming my house kicking my door in and shooting me because i'm somehow the bad guy now simply because I don't like seeing corruption fucking run rampant through that, our country. That makes you an extremist. Yeah. A terrorist. They're George fucking, Bush labeled you. Yeah. We're, uh, tell me about that again. I didn't hear what he said. Dude, George Bush gave essentially gave the same speech as Hillary Clinton on 9-11. And they were talking about how 9-11 was such a, a, a bad day and a dark day. But, you know, and... Uh, it's much, much like January 6th, you know, and January 6th was, they were like comparing that to 9-11 and, you know, the, the, and saying like it was just as bad, if not worse. And I saw some fucking cunt saying and, it was worse. You know, that the, uh, the extremists in uh, that, you know, on January 6th, that same mentality is the extremist mentality the Taliban have. And we share that, you know, that common denominator. Well, then give me a bunch of assault rifles for free. All right. Dude, you met what you remember being in the, in the army. If you lost your fucking nods, you know, bro, in Afghanistan, you would be fired. If you lost. Uh, dude, I talked about this on, I'm not sure it was my podcast or another, but it's like. Not just nods, but like a scope. Any, yeah. Anything. Any serialized inventory. Anything that's a, a, an accountable piece of equipment. And for weapons and nods. A like, radio. They'll go into what they call post lockdown. Like your battalion will be online in the woods. Fucking shoulder to shoulder. A thousand dudes walking through the training area until those are recovered. Nobody's going home. Yeah. The unit's on lockdown. Like they, oh, we've had to do FOD walkthroughs, line just like you're saying, line up shoulder to shoulder, walk through the entire anywhere. Like you know, I'm talking about doing field, you know, ops, and it's like all right, everywhere we fucking could have been walked yep. around, we're gonna 
get online shoulder to shoulder and walk through until we find this scope that fell off someone's gun or some sort of serialized inventory. And, if and no one's going home. Till no it's one's found. going home till it's found and not even sensitive items. If you lose fucking Nomex gloves, you know, and they're part of your inventory from CIF, the central issuing facility. When you go to clear CIF and you don't have your Nomex gloves, They'll say, okay, that's a $60 and you have to pay that before you can ETS. So the army is going to get reimbursed for anything that you lost. And that goes for probably E1 through E9. And I don't know where it stops in the O ranks, but it reaches a point where people inside of our government are not held accountable anymore. And you just lose $85 billion worth of fucking aircraft, ammunition, weapons, taxpayer dollars yeah and that's the thing that's not his fucking equipment you, that's not his to lose or to give away that's ours can you imagine what the 80 billion dollars could do in the ghetto in, i mean to our country that's what i'm saying yeah why don't you uh, you know how far a billion one single one billion dollars what you the good you could do with that now you have more than a billion dollars almost two billion dollars per state you could literally give that money to and improve in all kinds of different areas and, and facets in our country. And instead, we just armed the people that we've been fighting for 20 years. So that was a complete waste of time. And it's not something that's uh, I don't think you can look at that and be like, oh, he made a bad decision. That's not a bad decision. That's dereliction of duty. Like any E5 inside of the special operations could be like, yeah, well, you you implement security, then you do your op, then when the op is over, security is last to pull out. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a very commonly understood concept in any type of military operation. You're telling me that the generals and all these motherfuckers at the top thought, you know what, let's pull Bagram Airfield and let's close CAF down, Kandahar Airfield, and then we'll get everybody out after that. Like what, there's no way. I think it was there's by no, design. That's what I'm saying. It had to be by design. You know? It had to have been by design. And they wanted this fucking, I believe, they wanted this chaos. They wanted this panic. They wanted public outcry to get those Americans out. Get those people out. Get those poor Afghans out. And, dude, even CNN got in on it, you know, and, and fucking, like, pissing on Joe Biden, uh, you know, for, for all this stuff. And I think they want Joe Biden to, to take a shitload of heat. I think they want everybody on both sides to dislike Joe Biden, and Joe Biden's going to be the fall guy. Yeah. And they wanted all of this fucking outcry to hurry up and get these poor people out. And this deadline's the 31st. We've got to hurry up. Come on, get them on board. Get them on board. They're shuffling all these fucking refugees on that are not fucking cleared. And there's there was 130,000 people that came over you know how many of them were american citizens how many five thousand <laughs> and now we have over a hundred thousand refugees that just got shuffled over here and are now being going to refugee camps around america you know where they're all at nope swing states oh really yep and they're going to be pushing as hard as they can for fucking you know, no voter ID and to have illegal immigrants or refugees, all them to ha everyone to have, uh, you know, the ability to vote in the elections because their hope is that they'll vote Democrat. Because that's who was in office when they got saved, huh? Well, you know, typically like uh, the Democrats are pushing for more government assistance with everything and, you know. Like the, the illegals that are crossing the border and shit like that, they're going, they're being paid or, you know, by the government to, they're being placed like wherever they want to go in the country. Uh -huh. and, the, and the taxpayers are paying for them to do that. And dude, look at the fucking southern border right now. <clears throat> it's insane. They said thousands of people are just crossing the Rio Grande and that's cool. Mm -hmm. No big deal. Yeah. Like we're just going to pretend this isn't happening. And none of them are, co you know, like there's not like all the COVID shit is non-existent there. Yeah. You can't fucking go into a, oh God, dude, 
You can't go into a restaurant without your mask on. This was yesterday. We walk into Fogo de Chao. Is that, that how was, I say that? That was today. Was that today? Yeah. It was earlier today. <laughs> See, dude, it's all blending together. I well, smoked, I think we came I smoked, back and I laid smoked down after too much we? weed this weekend. Didn't we? Yeah, um, we came back and took a little nap. But we're like, uh, we don't have a mask. Oh, you can have, we'll, we'll give you a mask. We're like, can we just sit down at the table? Um, when you walk there, you have to have a mask on. And so we all sit at this table while we wait to have another table cleaned. And you don't have to have a mask on if you're sitting at the waiting table. But when you get up from the waiting table to walk to the table that they're going to bring your food to, it's fucking 16 feet. And she wasn't, she wouldn't let us walk to the table. And then I like what you said, man, because it's like, hey, do you think all this is necessary? And she's like, no, but I have, I'm told to do it. So I have to. Every single person, unless you're a fucktard that tells someone to put a mask on is doing it because somebody told you to. Mm -hmm. Somebody told them to tell them to tell them to tell them to tell them. And everybody's too afraid to just stop playing these fucking charades. And that dude, fuck, dude, we, every episode could be about this because it's so infuriating. Like, everybody knows it's theater, but nobody's fucking doing anything about it. And how many times do we see this weekend people pull their mask down to take a drag of their cigarette or drink their fucking pina coladas? Or no one cares, like, when, whenever someone's like, you have to do the mask thing, you have to do the mask thing, I put, I put it on as a chin strap. Like... A blatant chin strap. There's, n it's not even touching my my <laughs> lips, and yeah. and they leave it. They're yeah, just like, like okay, yeah. Well, that's because so you just want it literally on the face, of, and I think it's like maybe so they can cover their own ass. Yeah, that's you what know? I was just gonna say. CYA. All right, well, my boss. Well, I told him to put a mask on, and he and, did, and he did. I didn't, I didn't notice that it or whatever. I, you know? I didn't see it wasn't over his his lips. Ah, <laughs> oh, dude, I'm so fucking sick of this shit, but. It's all coming to an end soon because the revolution is coming. No, I don't think the revolution's coming for probably three years. But travel lockdown is coming next. They just talked about And then we're not gonna be able to hang out and do the Greg and Mitch show. Dude, I just bought a fucking dope truck. There we go. Yeah. To to drive across the country. And if if the if the vaccine mandate, passport, whatever the fuck call it, uh, for the flying, then I will be buying like a motor home type thing and you know uh hiring a full-time driver and just if i want to go hang out with greg i'm just gonna have to plan it out for a day in advance or two days in advance to drive there you know but when you have a driver and you're in a fucking like little rv thing like that you can lay down and you know just play on your phone or whatever it's it's not that bad i would imagine plus you can probably like plan your route out to stop in cool places Do a bunch of cool shit yeah. Yeah. I'm actually okay with travel restrictions. I'm not okay with it like as a as a means of something that's Dude, the mask thing isn't even like whatever. Like that that's fucking super dumb and whatever, but if if that's the only way that you'll let me on this fucking airplane, okay, I'll wear a fucking mask. But that's not that's not invasive. Like no, yeah, yeah. like uh, injecting something into my DNA. Get well, the fuck out of here. I, when I say I'm okay with it, I don't mean I'm oh, like accepting of it yeah but i'm i'm comfortable thinking and planning about you know what i guess i'll just be in the pacific northwest for the foreseeable future and if that means 10 years that means 10 years unless i road trip everywhere but there's also talks about banning interstate travel how the fuck are they going to enforce that bro i don't fucking know but like i've seen most of the fucking world i wanted to see a lot more of it but if uh if I get locked down to Washington for the next couple of years, and what does so that, be it. Fuck and, you. And what does that matter? Like, I know, dude. COVID, like, you know what I mean? Like, plenty of people will have COVID in every state. So what does it matter what state it came from? Like, and if you're vaccinated, you can still catch and uh, spread. I'm, so. dude, I just wish everyone would hurry the fuck up and get it over with. Get, just get COVID. Just get it. Go fucking roll the dice. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Take one for the team. Fucking, you want to talk about like, do it for your neighbor. Do it for this person. Just go. How about everyone go get COVID and just get it over with. If yeah, you but, die, you die. But then it you'll sucks. have natural immunity and natural immunity. Even though the studies say that it's stronger, 
that's a that's a fucking that's a lie from radical conspiracy theorists like you and i science yeah fucking i mean i i mean i told you we talked about this off air but dr sanjay gupta cnn's fucking mouthpiece physician that's usually saying whatever the fuck they want him to say asked fauci last week he's like well the studies did come out showing natural immunity is showing to be better than the vaccine so if these studies are true how do you tell someone that's already had covid that they need to get the vaccine and fauci goes well you know that's a that's a very good question that's a very good question and and the truth is i just don't know what anytime someone says that's a good question it's almost time to slap them because it's like no shit motherfucker i just asked it like i don't need you to reiterate what a great question it is the reason you did that is because you're fucking you're getting put back on your heels you don't have the you don't know how you're going to answer it and then he just fucking nose dived in and goes well and 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 i don't know then 24 hours later that same motherfucker says i do support banning air travel if you're unvaccinated like what the fuck are, you know what i'm saying like absolute fucking the the words that are coming out of his mouth he's he's speaking out of both sides of his mouth and everybody fucking sees it and we just keep playing along with it and where did that motherfucker become like the gold standard to decide everything for everyone about everything it's fucking ridiculous dude but if you believe anything different than him i.e nicole your shit gets deleted and you can never speak publicly again. It's very strange, man. Like science in as far as like the longest, you know, as history's been around, as science has been around, you're supposed to question science and you're supposed to like test it. You know and, what I mean? And, and, and with the mindset of disproving shit or proving shit. Yeah. And, that's, all, you and know? that's how it improves constantly, you know? And it's like, at first, you know, we thought that Earth was the center of the universe, you know, and, and p- some people questioned that and they questioned it and ran experience, looked at data, experiments, looked at data, all this stuff. And then it was like, oh, now we have a new understanding, you know, and it's like that's all gone now. Right. Right now, for some reason, people are just like, if you're presenting anything that goes against what Fauci says, you're a conspiracy theorist and you're a fucking an extremist and you know what i mean and a bad person and it's it's bizarre that there's i mean did you listen do you ever listen to uh brett weinstein yeah anybody that has any doubt about how intelligent that person is or how evolutionary by a biologist and and how critically he thinks about things like all you have to do is listen to one podcast and you know okay this dude his opinions hold weight his opinions hold his wife is a scientist yeah and i listened to a podcast of them last week and they're just like these are super intelligent scientists that are shocked at what's happening it's not a ranger and a seal that smoked weed all weekend that are mad about fauci these are super intelligent scientists that are at the top of their game super credible yeah super credible dude but it doesn't matter It, it you know nobody cares it's just fucking, it's crazy, dude. On that note, let's go back to jujitsu. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody listening is like, when are they going to keep talking about jujitsu? Um, I don't even know how we got off topic. It's okay. Whatever, but. but I wanted to, I wanted to talk about our matches a little bit. Okay. Cause it was cool. Right. Yeah. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about it in the last 24 hours cause I lost, but the truth is i also i trained no gi twice for this event because i'm a gi guy so two night one night i rolled hard at a no gi practice and then another night i took my gi top off and it's like can you really expect to have much success when you're not taking things very seriously and then I watch you who trains three days a month <laughs> and you do have g- good success, you know, or not even three days a month. And it's like, <clears throat> it just makes my wheel spin. Cause it's like, what do I have to do to be the best, best version of myself? And I'm always thinking about like, Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to change that. But I think I'm going to give myself an overhaul when I get home with diet, with training, with intensity, all that stuff. Cause it's mm-hmm. like, 
There's absolutely no reason I should have lost that match. Well, I asked you if you wanted to warm up. Dude, I never warm up, though. I mean, I don't know. I, I watched your warm up. You were throwing people. I, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to get thrown before a match. I mean, your, they, your warm ups looked like a full on, full contact fight, dude. And yeah, they were. But it's like, <laughs> that's, you know, it's like, uh, that's for me, that's how I get warmed up. Like, I, I just want to go. I just want to go full speed. And, you know, that first, that first round is usually my worst round. The first five to ten minutes, you know, and then after that, I, you know, I'm all like, oh, okay, that, that, you know, got shaken out, shaken out, whatever. And the next time I lock up, then it's like my blood's already been pumping. I'm fucking good to go. And that's why I wanted to get a real hard round out, you know, with, with Cam or, uh, you know, round or two. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, I don't want to burn myself out totally before this match because we haven't really eaten in much today i had like three smashing greens or two smashing greens and uh i had like half of a sushi burrito and that was all that was the only thing i had and uh you still get like the little bit of the the pre-competition jitters you know what i mean like where you're just kind of like anxiously waiting to to go yeah i wouldn't even consider this not jitters but just anxiously waiting yeah It's not like a nervousness. Sometimes I'm nervous before competition, but this vibe was chill. Yeah, it was totally chill and it was fun, but I'm also like I'm about to roll I'm about to grapple yeah. with a fucking legend. Yeah. You know? So But the thing I guess the thing that's frustrating to me is like I don't think I've ever competed under those rule sets. But the thing is if you if you agree to do a competition under their rule sets, you can't make excuses about it. Mm-hmm. that's the rule sets so you either won under their rules or you lost and i lost and it's frustrating though because it's like i never got swept i never got taken down i never had my guard pass i never had a submission attempt put on me so none, you, none of that stuff happened rest decision no what happened was i out if if it were a pointed match i outpointed that guy all day i got a sweep i got a pass i had him in mount is the overtime that got he got it was yeah so if there's no submission for the first six minutes then it goes into two sudden death rounds where you're only looking for submission right so we did two sudden death rounds looking for the submission it didn't happen in either of those and so the third sudden death round is first to get a point oh yeah that's right that's right and i shot and then he sprawled, right? he sprawled and then i tried to do a single and i got <clears throat> kind of i wouldn't even call it swept kind of like a. you just uh, ended up on uh, top i ended up going into turtle and he came up you got your back briefly didn't he he didn't get my back but he was high he he had like my hips while i turtled you know yeah. And they said, that's two points. Match is over. And dude, I already had the Kimura locked up on his arm. And it's like, I don't know. Yeah. I just don't like it. I would almost. I shouldn't you sh- say that. You should have got it done in six that's minutes. That's what I'm bro. saying. Yeah. You know, fuck. Oh, well. Hey, but same for me. I mean, uh, my match was eight minutes and uh, submission only. And then we went into the overtime. And neither Jake and I both, before we got on the mats, like when we were in the warm up stage, he's like, "Do you know how the the overtime works?" And I was like, "No, not really." <laughs> and he was, yeah, was, and and I was like, "I'm sure they'll just explain it to us, you know." And yeah, but so, dude, like I didn't play the game either because, like Cam told me afterwards, he's like, "Bro, the the one minute of sudden death, or the the sudden death round is just one minute. After that, ref's decision." Yeah, because I was like. I'm, he's not going to take me down. So I could have just fucked around for a minute, you know, but whatever. That's yeah. fucking, that's fucking life. That's jujitsu. And you know, what's weird is like, I didn't understand how it worked. And that, that's why, like when they told me I had 15 seconds, I was like, what? Jake got a minute. And, you know, cause I didn't realize, Oh, it was, you have to beat the time that he said yeah, yeah. in the overtime. So the sudden death submission rounds for people that are, trying to put this together if you go the full fight and there's no submission they go into sudden death submission where you start on their back or they start on your back and 
the whole goal is to try and submit the other guy. And if you, you submit minute. him, you have one minute to submit him. If you submit him in that one minute, then you switch positions and your opponent now has that amount of time to submit you. And, and then if, if, and if that happens, that, you're going to if that happens, then it goes exactly continues to go into like a third overtime. And then it's the first point person to score a point. Wins. Exactly. Yep. And Jake got the choke when they put him on your back right. in 15 seconds. Uh -huh. And so you had 15, 15 seconds, seconds to, to finish him. To make him tap. To square up yep. and be even again. Yeah. And I couldn't, I couldn't make him tap in 15 seconds. So they were like, that's it. You lost. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. But I mean, that's, and it's kind of weird. I mean, I get it. That's EBI rules, Eddie Bravo's thing, kind of. Sort I guess they, they modified him a little mm -hmm. bit. But it's always kind of weird how it's like, all right, start on your back or start in the arm bar position. Because it's like one of the biggest essence of jujitsu is getting to that position to where you can submit someone. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I don't know if I like it or not, to tell you the truth. Yeah. I'll have to ruminate on it. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't my favorite rule set but um you know and and i i just like the submission only i like the no time limit submission only or you know eight minutes that's that's still a lot of time to work for you know two good people uh or that's that's not a lot of time you know i think if you're good and i'm good and we could easily go eight minutes you know i think uh, 15 minutes or yeah, something but i mean black cool. belt matches are 10 you know, yeah, like that IBJJF standards. Are well, 10 I'm, minutes. I'm not a black belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually think brown belts are eight, but I, I don't know. Um, I would have preferred longer time, but that's okay. The no, t no time limit to submission is obviously like the essence of jujitsu, mm -hmm. and if it takes two hours, it takes two hours. But I think, uh, in the interest of like an event, yeah. Maybe you just do one 10 minute round and then have referee's decision after that. Cause you're going to have a pretty clear idea of who out grappled who. Mm -hmm. If you're like a, if, if you're a good ref and you understand jujitsu. Well, okay. Let's say Jake just sat on my chest and fucking, you know, had me in a submission danger for nine minutes out of the 10, like, and the fights fights over referee's decision. It's like, okay. Jake pretty clear that, yeah, yeah you know yep you know what i'm saying but in some matches would be more difficult and mm -hmm. that's why you see split decisions right right but like i i did a tournament at my academy a couple of years ago i called it the electric open it was actually really cool the you do learn that events are substantially harder we only it was just an eight-man tournament winner takes all it was a hundred dollar buy-in winner takes all so it's pretty cool the one or the winner won 800 bucks but with that much money on the line, I got like three of the best refs in Washington and that's how we did it. It was like matches were this long. If there's, there was no points, but if there was no submission, it went to referee's decision. And now you have three competent refs watching the match that decide who won and who lost. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. I think that's a good way yeah. to do it. Yeah, that's cool. But one ref, that's difficult too because bias are real, you know? Yeah. And, you know, and, and like we both got told that we were stalling in our fights. And then you had said like the ref told you that we don't actually have stalling. Yeah. He just wanted me to start working harder. Yeah. But dude, I mean, this is the reality of jujitsu is sometimes jujitsu is boring to watch, but I felt that big, strong motherfucker underneath me. And I knew I had to, what I call Khabib his hips, you know, you pin their hips to the mat. And then you worry about clearing, it was butterfly guard. So when I'm clearing butterfly guard, I like to body lock the hips and then worry about how to pass the guard and untangle my feet. And sometimes that takes a little time, you know, you get fucking reckless or you try and be too fast with a guy that is squirrely or has good hips, you're going to create an opening. So that's why I always say jujitsu can sometimes not be the best spectator sport because that shit's probably boring to watch. I get it, you know, dude. And I'm I'm locked up with with Jake Shields, and you know we're we're Walk, fighting for tie or for yeah, clinch work, we're clinch shit. working yeah. each other, and you know what I mean. He could fucking snap my head down and guillotine me. Like I'm I'm in trouble everywhere, you know. Like he he did 
he got on a couple of guillotines. What did that feel like? He tried. He tr- he tried to stand and guillotine me once. You know, um, I was able to get out of it, uh, but I, I just know how high level he is. You know, so mm-hmm. I um, if I'm gonna shoot in on him, I know that a guillotine is is a real threat. So I need to pick my shot carefully. You know, and like he's he's not like a passive fighter grappler you know so he's not letting me just chill ever yeah you know he's yanking down and this and that and he's gonna bully me if i let him you know so that all that shit like pushing back and forth and he like threw me off the stage twice you know like yeah like it was constant pressure and you know it's just be and i tried to snap him down two or three times you know like i was i was working for sure and i you know it's just being sort of cautious uh, as, as cautious as you can be while still being engaged. And, and they were like saying like, you're stalling, you're stalling. And I'm like, motherfuckers, I'm fucking grappling Jay Shields. I'm not stalling. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, but dude. then I was like, all right, fuck it. We're going, we're going in then. So I had fucking shot in for that double leg and picked him up and, and you know, he would, he went over my head. That was, <clears> that was <throat> a highlight of the night for me. Yeah. <laughs> so I was sitting in the corner seat and, when he was completely sideways in the air, higher than your head. Yeah. You know? It was like, oh, fuck, dude. There's that Mitch power. <laughs> yeah. Now I picked him up and slammed him down, and, and I felt bad. You know, I was like, oh, fuck, man. My bad. Like, I even, like, reached a hand out to, like, help him up. Yeah. I was like, my bad, dude. And he's like, I was like, you okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm good. Cause, and it's not that, like, I think I'm going to hurt Jake Shields or anything like that, but just the the nature of this event being a charity event you know it's 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 not like super high level uh comp or you know it's you know what i mean like i'm not concerned about this yeah it's not like, it's like a, a world titles on right the line nothing or like that yeah. like this is just for fun it's for charity you know what i mean and obviously it's a it's a real competition and stuff and but you're, yeah you're gonna try and win and i'm gonna try to win but but it's not worth like i would feel bad if he got hurt doing us a favor by competing in a charity event you yeah, know? yeah and yep. it was because like i picked him up over my head and fucking slammed him down you know what i mean and then i would feel bad if if you landed on his knee wrong or some shit you know yeah. what i mean so i was like oh fuck man i was like are you all right and he's like yeah i'm good dude and i was like okay cool <laughs> and then and then the hip toss came right after that yeah which is yeah. fucking rad dude yeah got a nice hip toss and uh yeah and then i think he he ended up uh, mounting me and then I swept him because uh, he was trying to come up high and set up like a triangle it seemed like he had, he had me in the uh, arm triangle for a long time I was defending that when he was on top of me and um, I ended up sweeping him from the mount and got on got in his guard did a guard pass stand up rodeo guard pass and collapsed down on him pretty good passed and uh and then i got to his back and got got a hook in and uh had a seat belt grip and was fighting for a choke but he was defending the choke pretty well and then you know sat up to to set up an arm bar and i was like real tempted to try the aguiar choke but uh he wasn't quite flattened out and he kept rolling so i was I went for the arm bar, he rolled belly down, so I went inverted, and then he rolled some more, and I was like, okay, now I'm going to try a triangle choke. But I couldn't get past his his left arm with my left leg, and then uh, time ran out, essentially. So Yeah. So then we went to overtime. But it was definitely a back and forth, because I would say in the beginning, we had our little tie-ups and everything, and... The wrestling was kind of even, kind of stall, you know, kind of even both sides. And then once he got on top of me, I was in trouble for sure with his head and arm triangle chokes and pressure. And uh, for probably the first half of the match, yeah, first four minutes or so, or uh, was me surviving that onslaught from him, and then kind of reverse the roles. You know, so it was definitely exciting. And I I don't think anyone there probably uh, expected the match to be as competitive as it was. You know, so um, I'm sure that was fun for everybody to watch. Well, I mean, that's what people want to, right? Like, 
most people that know jujitsu probably expected Jake once he had you mounted. That's a wrap. Yeah. You know, but your fucking mindset is everything approach. It's yeah. like, cause I could see your mouth. You were pushing and creating a little pocket and I could see you breathing. And I was like, there's no way Mitch taps to this. Yeah. No. You know? oh, and he had me in a heel hook. Pretty. Oh pretty yeah, good. yeah. After, uh, I think after I swept him or no, it was after, after the, the throw, hip toss. After the after hip, the hip toss. Yeah, yeah. After the hip toss, I landed kind of knee on belly, knee on sternum with him. And he ended up grabbing my leg and, putting me in a leg lock and a heel hook and uh, had it secured you know and we had to do some gator rolling some death gator rolling out of there and uh ended up getting out of that it was it was fun it was a it was a it was definitely a high level you know fast pace exciting type match and uh back and forth like i said so and jake shields is a legend um you know he's fucking probably had his black belt longer than i even knew what jujitsu was uh-huh and uh and has what 50 fights or some shit i don't know definitely up there you know and uh so you know he's a huge draw huge name in the mma world and the grappling world super legitimate as legit as they come and you know just to to share the mat with him on a platform like that was super cool and um you know what i mean to to be able to put on an exciting show and and match for everybody watching it was just fucking super cool yeah and the guys that run that there were fucking cool too man just yeah, just a cool. neat just a neat idea and like i don't i've never rolled high before and i didn't get baked but i was a little high you know but i also don't think that affected my rolling at all yeah no it you know what i mean like i didn't feel if anything kind of it makes you focus a little bit more on it or not i don't know i've rolled high plenty and it's never affected me i mean i guess i would say if i would have competed stone cold sober i think you would have had an identical outcome you know i mean i don't think it like was in my favor or in my detriment so yeah. whatever you know um <clears throat> and then we went back the next day and did their podcast What's their podcast called again? Uh, I, who I, Wants the Smoke. Who Wants the Smoke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I didn't, I mean, I don't know. I feel like I've smoked a lot of weed this weekend. I'm, yeah. I think I'm going to take like a month off. Yeah, we smoked a lot and we ate a lot. Yeah, because I feel, I just, ugh, my throat's been hurting all day. Yeah. I'm fat. Like, I got to fuck, like I said a, like half hour ago, I think I'm going to dial it in. I got to fucking, I got to tighten up my shot group. And we, we definitely enjoyed ourselves <laughs> well, we got here and we were just we were both like oh man we're like right at the 200 pound mark uh, you know and and we don't know if we have to like cut weight for this or if we can just whatever just do it and i called matt the one of the owners of uh the fucking high roller thing and i'm like did i'm like hey I don't give a fuck what Jake weighs. <laughs> and yeah. he's like, yeah, we don't give a fuck. We just did the weight classes. Like, so it'd be more fair for the cops. He's like, <laughs> he's like this team stoners. And you know, normally our shit is all absolute. So uh -huh. like guys are always different weights and stuff. It doesn't really matter. We I don't, like, we that. don't care. And I was like, fuck. Yeah. No, that made me happy. Good. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I want to be a fatty. Uh, I weighed in at so two, two Oh three. I went and got Starbucks. Cause <laughs> I, I hadn't had Starbucks in like, almost three weeks you uh -huh. know, because i just did the fast before too. oh yeah, yeah so and i fucking love those starbucks uh coffees the fufu coffees that i get java chip add caramel syrup add caramel drizzle bro i don't know how you stay shredded consuming that stuff Dude, i would look like chris farley if i drank those I, but you're you always hang out with me on like my special occasions <laughs> yeah, every time we're kicking it you're eating whatever the fuck you and, want and then like, like it's like where have you been the last two weeks i've been fasting yeah, <laughs> yeah you know true. oh i haven't eaten for two weeks yeah i haven't eaten any food in two weeks dude how are you fucking shredded <laughs> like, dude i've been training and eating and fucking eating drinking wheat wheatgrass grass. that's right dude you uh, fucking tend to shred up pretty quick <laughs> But we got we got some more good stories. It was fun. Yeah, we uh we saw we talked about Chris Angel. We did not talk about the bread at the restaurant. <laughs> Every time I hang out with Mitch, there's some issue at a restaurant that he won't let go. 
But the funny thing is, it's like, you're always right. Like, you're not bringing up stuff that's unreasonable. No, I, it's not like, something I enjoy. <laughs> yeah, but you also I don't like, look for it. If, if, if you think something like fundamentally goes against what your perception of right is, like, it's a fucking problem. And it took, so we went to, like I said, Fogo de Chao. Maybe I'm saying that yeah, right. It's a Brazilian like steakhouse. And uh, they try and bring us a bunch of lower quality meats. Like even like Was sausage. this your first time at something like that? Me and Joao went to one of those when I lived in California. Okay. That was my second time, I think. Well, they're all the same. They it's, all pull the same shit. So they try and, they try and uh, tempt you with the lower quality meats. And Mitch is like, no, 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 no. I don't want sirloin. I don't want pork. I don't want chicken. I want your sausage. I, nope. I want filet mignon. Yeah. And they brought probably like six more meats out. And you're like, no, no, no. Listen, I want filet mignon. Like I've told you like five times. Yeah. <laughs> and it probably, it, it took them what? 30 minutes. That was a long time to get the filet mignon out there. And again, it's like, yeah, okay, first world problems, right? But we're also paying first world prices. Uh -huh. And if you're going to a steakhouse and that's on the menu and that's an option, you should be able to get that. And they, they bring this fucking bread to every table. <laughs> this isn't like something, this isn't a, a unique item, you know what I mean? Or like a specialty item. Uh -huh. This is fucking bread <laughs> that they're putting at every fucking table. And I asked them for some bread and it literally took... 20 minutes to get me some bread and i asked him how many times yeah like six six seven times <laughs> to the point where it's like it's it, everybody understands like this i have half, i have half of the restaurant and i don't care what your role is if you have a uniform on at this restaurant you knew that i wanted bread yeah yeah and the thing is, I mean fuck, like how many fucking times do i have to ask for it for four people it was pushing 400 bucks right so why can't you Bring me some bread. Did you pay for dinner this time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know what it was. Yeah. It was about, I think it was like 365. But I mean, I also, that's what those places cost, right? Yeah. So they're normally it, like 50 bucks a plate, but I guess it was a little more than that. Yeah. A little more than that. Vegas prices probably. Yeah. But still like, yeah, if you're paying that kind of money, you should be able to have a little bit of expectation. Dude, the first restaurant though, we went to the first steakhouse that was fucking... What was that place called? It was in the Luxor. Tender something? Tender Steakhouse or something like that. That place was fucking legit, dude. Yeah, super good. We all got super high. <laughs> That's yeah. the theme of the weekend. We all got super high. <clears throat> and then... I mean, I've been more full on multiple occasions this trip than I have been in probably years. I mean, I don't remember the last time when we were, when we were at that steakhouse the night we got here. I couldn't eat one more bite of food. Like not one more bite. <laughs> and okay. I was just like, God, oh, dude, what am I doing to myself? What, like, I, what am I doing? I ordered everything for everyone on the menu. And it was, <laughs> it was so good. Everything was fucking super tasty. Yeah. Too. There wasn't one. And they were on top of their game too. Yep. The appetizers were fucking bomb. Cause dude, and I flew all day. All, every one of us got filet mignon. And I fucking was like... Uh, Lobster mac and shit. I was dehydrated. And so I was like, all right, I forgot to... I basically forgot to drink water all day and I'm competing tomorrow. So I'm going to try and drink like 10 glasses of water. And dude, that dude was on top of it constantly. So it was cool. Yeah. Did you just hear that, dude? Yeah, it might, might have been the frog jumping in. Or, or the turtle. turtle or something. Yeah. Man, I feel like we had... We had so many points we wanted to discuss on this show, but it's like one thirty in the morning now. We said we were going to talk about uh, the fucking the bread we we're joking about, but the uh, the luggage not super important. Yeah, not <laughs> nobody cares about that. <laughs> we, we we ran into a guy. Uh, well, we went and saw the Chris Angel show. It's fucking weird. After that, we had come out and there was this dude who was probably like. I would say he's probably in his late twenties, uh, athletic frame, black guy wearing nothing but a some some pants and a bulletproof vest, and he was screaming, walking around the Vegas Strip, 
and uh, you know, kind of hurling threats out into the the open, and not really directed at any one individual. He was just kind of sp- almost like you speaking to uh, people in his head. You yeah, know? I mean, I think he was clearly a paranoid schizophrenic. Something. But, I mean, you, I, I dealt with a lot of those people as a police officer, and a lot of it is drug-induced. Like when people say, oh, this is a mental health problem. Well, no, he, he fucking ruined his brain by smoking methamphetamine for 10 years. But that dude was clearly having some type of, like, audio or, or visual hallucinog- yeah. hallucinations. Because you could see... Like, like you said, he wasn't really addressing people, but it was like, I don't know. He want it was like he wanted to fight someone. He wanted he wanted anyone to like step up to him. Yeah, and like get in his way. Like he was trying to prove. Like I don't I don't know. It was very strange. But I was like, okay, this guy is unhinged he's clearly not all there or he's high on drugs or something like the lights are on but but nobody's home nobody's home and and he's being very aggressive and very violent and yelling you know shit like i'm not the fucking one you know i'm not fucking playing blah blah I'll, i'll kill and i'll die for this or whatever you know what i mean like saying weird shit and Everyone and he's just walking up and down the sidewalk and escalators and streets and you know into stores and shit into stores and screaming and and you know and and people are clearly uncomfortable around him and they're kind of like is this guy gonna attack me and that's exactly what I thought was like this guy's gonna attack someone and you know and I'm like Greg I'm like I'm just gonna fucking tackle this dude and <laughs> choke him out. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> and Greg's like, well, he hasn't done anything illegal yet, you know? And I'm like, ah, like, you know, and he's like, you know, if, technically, like if we were police officers and, and this was us in this situation and you did that, you'd be the one that get in trouble. And I'm like, what the fuck, then? That's so fucked up. Cause it's like, this guy's clearly, you know, deranged. Like he's, he's. Yeah, there's a problem. There's a problem going but, on, but you know. The, but and that's a, that's one of the craziest it's like things. You have to wait for him to fucking yeah. bash some woman in the face, and then, you know, you can go after and and get us. Like it's like I'd rather be preventative. You know, you're showing a lot of signs of hostile fucking intent. Yeah, every pre assault indicator, as they call them in the world of law enforcement. Yeah, and it's was like being I'm not, not, not going to hurt, sure. hurt you. You know, like I just wanted to. To grab the dude and fucking bear hug him, essentially, and just hold him until the cops got there, you know, and like take this guy to the hospital or something like he's fucking these big giant cities that are just being overrun with drugs and fucking mental illness and homelessness like they they are not they're not doing any type of enforcement with the homeless populations anymore because they don't even have the resources to. Now, I don't know. I'm from Seattle, so I'm obviously using that as a baseline. I bet we could figure something out with $80 billion. <laughs> yeah, no shit. But I don't know if Vegas... I mean, we did... I saw a lot of crazy homeless drug addicts today. Yeah. So they clearly have a problem here as well. But I don't know... Not nearly as many as Seattle. No, 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 not nearly. But I don't. also don't know how their enforcement is or what they, what they do. Like, if you were to tackle that guy in Seattle and then called the police... They might not have even responded. All right. So you tackled a guy that was screaming at people. Okay. Yeah. Did he, uh, there's nothing that he did that would have warranted a police response in Seattle. Now that's until he walked in traffic. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was going to say we used to have, which what was called ITA, the involuntary treatment act, meaning there's a matrix of different things that if you can articulate that he is a danger to himself or others or property or he lacks like he's lacking the ability to to implement self-care you can say okay for these reasons i don't think this guy is is capable of taking care of himself or he's a danger to himself or others you take him into custody and dude i've done this a lot where you literally you have the medics come and you strap them to the board against their will and restrain their arms and their legs and you put them on a fucking board and send them to the hospital. 
and then a doctor evaluates them and decides if we're going to keep them and do a longer assessment or kick them. That's kind of like, that's your good faith approach of taking somebody off the streets that you determined to be a problem. And now a professional is going to dictate if he is capable of going on his own and continuing life or if he needs some type of treatment. And, uh, I mean, that was a thing in Seattle up until a couple months ago. And now they're like, we're not doing that anymore because they've changed the law to where you cannot physically put your hands on someone unless there's probable cause for a crime. Being crazy is not a crime, you know? So all that's over now. And now it's just like, it's, it's already been like the walking dead in Seattle, but it's getting exponentially worse. I bet in Vegas with how much revenue is generated by tourism and all the fucking major casinos have like a lot of influence. I guarantee you they still have a way of getting crazy people off the strip or out of their casinos, you know? Yeah. But yeah, no, in once, like I said, once that guy started walking into the street and cars were fucking like having to swerve around him right there as a police officer, you can articulate, all right, this guy clearly shows he does not, have the ability to care for himself. Therefore he is a danger to himself. Hook him up. He's going to the hospital. Yeah. And then sometimes those people want to fight too. Like there's a good chance if a cop came and said, Hey, you're, you're going to the hospital. Fuck you. You know, he, he definitely that like, I mean, I was curious at that point. I just wanted to see like what's going to happen. I wanted to watch him get ran over. Yeah. That's what I, I mean, (laughs) fuck him. Right. Like, yeah, I have no sympathy for a but fucking... But it's also like that whoever's behind the vehicle, like, fuck, now they're having to deal with this shit. Yeah, they might be know? on vacation in a rental car. Yeah. Like, just, yeah. And, like, one of, one of my OGs who follows me, you know, a long time, he, he actually uh, got into a car accident and hit somebody uh, at midnight that was riding their bike on the highway. Yeah. You know, and, and the person died. Oh, and shit. It, and it fucked him up, you know? He's like, fuck, man, like... You know, and it's like, I I didn't even see him. And, you know, it's like, that's a shitty feeling that he has to live with or whatever. And he feels bad. But it's like, you shouldn't have been riding your fucking bike at midnight on the highway. Yeah. You know, what are you thinking? You know, and it's like this asshole's fucking playing Frogger in the middle of the street. (laughs) That's why I wanted him to get ran over. I know, but like, like, but the person behind the car now is like, fuck. And I feel bad because I'm like. I could have tackled this guy on the fucking sidewalk and just put him in a fucking hold, and, you know, until the cops came and yeah. got him off. But I'm telling you, bro, if you would have shot a double on that guy and when he fell down, he fucking split the back of his head and he needed five stitches or whatever the fuck it was. Then I'm liable. The pressure's on, the heat's on you now. Yeah. And that's, that's the fucking world we live in. And obviously, I'm not saying that I wouldn't get involved in an incident, like I'm chomping at the bit to get involved in incidents, but you also have to be willing or aware of the game that you're playing. You know, yeah. like I have no doubt. Actually, I know 100%. If that dude had like shoulder check someone or spit on someone or pushed but a lady, I was just waiting. He'd be done. Yeah. Cause we, I mean, you walked around. We, I was one. I was we watched, at the we watched to, him for probably 25 <laughs> minutes. Right. Yeah. While uh, everybody else we were with wanted to go to the Ferris wheel. Like, no, 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 no. I'm watching this guy. <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah, I'm chomping at the bit. If he fucking attacks an innocent person, then I'm going to fucking, you know, and then I'm you can him articulate up and slamming it, him yeah, over my head. You can but, articulate it all day long. You know, but I was wanting to do that beforehand because I'm like, I'm not going to give you the fucking chance because you know that guy said like i'm there watching so i i know that my, and my mom and my stepdad are with me you know everyone i love and care about is with me and i'm and i'm definitely not going to let you assault them but you know i just feel as that's like a, my role as a protector and it's like you know that's like what i talk about in my ethos like my strength and aggression are a blessing and i utilize them justly you know, and like, I am a protector of those that cannot protect themselves. And, you know, maybe someone else's, you know, mom is walking down or they're, you know, you know what I mean? Like just random f- innocent person that can't defend themselves. Cause that guy was, he was an athletic fucking dude, you know, a- yeah, athletic yeah. male. It, yeah. No, if you weren't trained and you had to fight that guy, 
he probably win <laughs> with, with, <laughs> you know? the, with the with the kind of rage and intensity yeah. he had, you know like yep. and then you have just some random person in vegas walking down the street that's probably never even been in a fight you know what i mean and then all of a sudden they've got this crazy fucking lunatic and uh, you know and pissed it's, off in their face and it's funny because like all the security guards were looking at him and did you see the security guards one of them even said i'm taco bell security i'm not dealing with this like Dude, and, and, and there was there was one security guard that was like 115 pounds probably <laughs> And like five foot eight. Yeah, that's right. Dude. Or whatever. And the, this other guy that looked like he could not run a mile if his life depended on it. And I'm just like this. And they're all on their fucking radios trying to get guidance of what yeah, to do. Yeah, who the fuck from, are they calling? Yeah. Like, like, oh, we got a crazy guy out here. Uh, beep, beep. Yeah. Hey, we got, yeah, we got a crazy guy. So that's like, I'm like, dude, I could just fucking tackle this guy right here, right now. End of story. <laughs> you know, and we could just avoid all this weirdness. And, and then you'd be doing overnight in jail and I'd be doing the Greg and Mitch show by myself. Yeah. <laughs> no. The cool thing is though. Even if I get arrested and go to jail for something like whatever, I don't have to answer to anybody uh, like a boss or something like that. Yeah. You know, like if you're in the military, you get in trouble twice. Yep. Or if you're, you have some job that, you know, not only do you get in trouble just with the law and you have to pay your fines and all that bullshit, but you're also in trouble with your work. It's not bizarre. It's kind of fucking weird when you think about it like that. Yeah. Oh, dude, I like thought in the that military, was crazy if you, if the military. If you don't, yeah, if you don't, if you have any interaction with law enforcement, you're supposed to go to your chain of command with it. Like, and they'll like if you get a DUI in the Navy, you have you get a DUI in the outside world, whatever. They don't care that you're in the military. They charge you just as a regular yeah. civilian or whatever. You get your fines, you lose your license, all that bullshit. But then you have to go to your command and now with your command they're going to fucking send you to captain's mass and you're going to get busted down in rank so you're going to lose money and that starts your time over now you're an e4 and you've got to go through three years of being an e4 to get back to e5 and you know they might take away half your pay as well for a few months and it's like on top of all the bullshit with that you still you know you get in trouble twice essentially Dude, we used to have something called school of a soldier. And if you got in trouble, and this was if you got in trouble on duty or off duty, you're the next, you'd be put on, uh, fuck it. What, what would they call it when you're locked down to the barracks? Like you weren't free to leave post for like 30 days or whatever. And this never happened to me. I never got in trouble when I was in the regiment, but my, I had buddies that did. And then on the weekends, instead of having days off, you would have to do road marches and dig fighting full size fighting positions all day. And like <laughs> this lets you know how fucking like indoctrinated our, our first sergeants are. He would follow these people around all weekend and he would drive behind them while they were doing their road marches and just make sure that they had the most miserable fucking weekend of their life and dig foxholes and sleep out in what was called Noble Hill and like <laughs> just fucking do a bunch of bullshit all fucking weekend. And I was like, dude, where's that guy's life? Like, yeah, some of those people live for that shit, dude. Isn't that fucking crazy? Can yeah. you imagine having to go in on the weekend and follow privates in your car while they did a 12 mile road march? Dude, I thought just having watch every once in a while was like fucking torture. Like, I'm like, like CQ like, is that, did you guys call it CQ? Like quarter deck watch. Okay. Like sometimes, uh, like, and they made seals do it like towards the end. Uh, they were making seals do it every once in a while. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Why? Was it was like a post duty or a you within this? your unit. No, it was like, um, like group two, like quarter deck watch. So it's like, uh, or at sometimes like if you got in trouble, you had to do, quarter deck watch at your seal team or whatever but um yeah i mean i don't know what your equivalent would be army stuff but yeah then uh, basically in like the the major buildings you know um and you answer the phones and fucking do all the dumb shit like secretary bullshit <laughs> yeah so weird yeah, I know we used to have that. It's called CQ or staff duty. And it was yeah, a, tw it was a 24 hour, a 24 yep. hour duty. Yep. 
And you just sit there all fucking night. Yep. And you answer phones and transfer fucking numbers and shit like yeah. that. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck am I doing? I like hearing about all the terrible shit about the military that you forget about. Yeah. I feel like when you get out of the military, it's easy to remember the cool stuff, but you forget how much bullshit there was. Oh, there was so like, that's much why, bullshit. That's why you're not in the military anymore. Cause there's bullshit, you know, I'm and so dude, much happier that I'm out of the military. Yeah. And I've been telling a lot of people lately cause just the nature of my friends and this show, you get a lot of young people that are inquiring about military service. And I've been telling people lately, dude, I support whatever path you want to take. And if you want to take, if you want to get the vaccine and you want to serve your country, like that's cool, right? If that's your choice and that's what you want to do. But me personally, if I was 19 years old right now, I would sit this administration out. For sure. Not just because of the vaccine, because of everything that this administration is showing to be just absolutely, utterly incompetent. Like, I would not want my children serving under this administration. And it's like, well, you still need someone to serve. Yeah, you do. But... It's not going to be me. It's not going to be my family. Fuck you. I mean, the, the the Afghanistan thing was bad enough where 13 Marines got killed. It's 100% his responsibility. This administration fucked that up so bad. Like, of course, you're going to have a fucking suicide bomber if you have fucking chaos and you don't have standoff. You don't have a security perimeter. Like, you don't have any type of concentric rings of security. You just have a mob of people right there on the gate of course something's gonna go bad like we used to shoot vehicles that broke within that perimeter mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like it's considered so deadly that if vehicles don't adhere to our rules of staying this far away from us you get fucking killed and you saw those videos there was mobs of people like handing babies over fences to the marines and shit yeah. it's like they had no control of their environment of course, they're going to fucking suicide bomb you. Anyone that's ever done one deployment overseas knows that fucking standoff is your friend and fucking improvised explosive devices, IEDs and EFPs. That is their fucking playbook. Of course that happened. Nope. Nobody cares. You know, like fuck this administration. Fuck all the high ranking military officers, all the generals that are just sucking his fucking dick. The administration kicked out all of Trump's appointees to all of the military academies, West Point, the Naval Academy and shit. And it's like anybody that isn't 100 percent on board their plan and their agenda, they're just getting fucking kicked out. And it's like that's not what people want in government. They don't want one party to control everything. But that's what they're doing. And that's why I tell young people, fuck this administration. Don't put your livelihood on the line when they're showing you that the way that they are running this country is rooted and grounded in utter incompetence. If you're dead set on being a fucking SEAL or being a Ranger, or that's a dream you used to have. I would say, let's see what happens in three years. And you can do a lot to build that career and make sure you're better at it as a civilian. Like, let's say you wanted to sign up and be a SEAL next year. Maybe you get two years of college under your belt, you know? Maybe you pursue some other skill sets to make, to make you a better operator when you do get the opportunity to go in. But don't fucking, don't rush into service in this administration because I just think it has the potential to go fucking bad. And then the other side of it is, I know I'm kind of on a rant here. You're good. People that are people that do want to serve, people that are wired to be a ranger, or be a SEAL, or be a fucking Marine grunt, your community might need you before your country needs you. Yeah. The type of men and women that are called to serve, you might be needed at home a lot sooner than you're needed overseas. And that's not fucking doomsday prepper shit. That's real shit. You know? Dude, in my opinion, our biggest threat right now is our own government. 100%, dude. 100 fucking percent. And uh, not only like with what they're doing and what they're implementing and all their mandates, but all the dirty deals that they're doing, like with China. I mean, do you know who Chad Robish Robichai is? No. He is uh, he's a retired Marine, and he, he actually fought for Strike Force. He's a high-level black belt. And he was an MMA fighter. He's a cool dude. I've talked to him on Instagram a little bit. I actually read his book. And uh, 
that's how I got connected with him. But he just went over there and was part of that team that rescued like 12,000 people or whatever, right? Yeah. And he did Mike Glover's podcast, and I haven't listened to it yet. And that podcast is called Mike Force. And I guess he lap and listened to it and called me and talked to me about it. And he said, dude, he really like breaks down and articulates how all of this was planned, calculated to benefit China because the administration is in their fucking back pocket. Mm -hmm. And dude, if that's proven to be true, if people can connect these dots, isn't that considered treason? Yeah, but that's the, that's the shitty thing is there's been so much shit that has been so blatantly like done and there's no accountability for it ever. Yeah. You know, like Hunter Biden's laptop, like that, for instance, you know what I mean? Like, and, and all the interference with the election with Facebook and Twitter and, and censoring, you know, information like that, you know, or why is nothing ever done? Like why, why is, why do we know Bill Clinton flew on fucking Epstein's jet 26 times to pedophile fucking Island and no accountability is being done about that. No one's asking any yeah, further think questions. About that. He's he, showing up he's at 9-11 events. He's showing up at, you know, giving speeches at the democratic fucking parties and stuff like that. And it's like, are we just going to ignore this? You know? Well, and it's, I think it's just, what about what about fucking uh, the the Cuomo guy that you know killed all those fucking people in the nursing homes and everyone knows it. Yeah, and there's just nothing being done about it. It's just uh, you fell on the sacrificial fucking you know uh, sexual harassment things and now you're gone. But that doesn't but, but, negate but that, yeah the, exactly the thousands that doesn't, of people that you are dead under your your rules. Just because you, know, you did watch. some other fucked up shit that yeah. got you kicked out of office doesn't mean that that excludes you from facing criminal charges, right? Yeah. Like, no, it's, it's very clear that the ruling class today, they don't have any fear in them anymore. You know, what's that saying? Like, like uh, the people that fear their government is tyranny. A government that fears their people is liberty. Mm -hmm. They don't fear us at all. No. Like we're fucking peons to them, you know? And so, yeah, bro. I mean, this comes up regularly on this podcast, but something has to fundamentally change. And I don't know how it happens because, like I said, I I wholeheartedly believe that our elections are not free and fair. And I think that eventually it will come to a point where primarily conservatives are fucking utterly pissed off and are just not going to tolerate it any longer because mm -hmm. when shit like Joe Biden so blatantly like how on earth can anyone fucking actually believe this guy got the most votes in, in history. history yeah like way more than Obama he was way more popular than Obama get the fuck out of here way dude. more popular than Trump Get the fuck out of here. There's no fucking way. And you know what I mean? And Gavin Newsom, like enough people fucking can't stand you and hate the job you're doing that they were able to form a recall petition, you know? And in that, like I said, 20% were your own party. And somehow you gained popularity in this fucking recall voting thing because of mail-in voting and it's like or you know and and like i said like these they showed on live tv these fucking votes for larry elder getting deleted and they're like oh that's con that's just human error something went wrong it was a glitch don't worry about it don't pay attention to that and it's just like what the fuck what it, that's gonna people are not gonna tolerate that shit eventually because that is supposed to be the the reason or the way that you fight back you know like you know i remember all last year during 2020 when people were like the big red wave you know the silent majority is gonna really show on election day because you know it's not the a lot of conservative people are not about taking to the streets and being activists and this and that, you know what I mean? And all the black lives matter shit was happening and all the COVID stuff was happening. And all these 
protests and stuff were primarily Democrats and, mm-hmm. and Black Lives Matter supporters and this and that. And I kept hearing, you know, the silent majority is going to really show it's going to be a huge red wave, you know, come election because that's what people are using as their way to fight back is their vote, yeah. you know? But then it's like when it's just totally hijacked, you know, by mail-in voting or these fucking Dominion voting systems or whatever that are apparently just accessible, you know, to the right people. And, uh, and then you get shit like Joe Biden and Gavin Newsom, you know, gaining fucking fuckloads of of votes and it can't be more blatantly obviously corrupt and eventually i don't think that's gonna fly with you know enough people are gonna get sick of that shit and they're gonna have to be a a change in the way we vote i think i feel like they're just systematically breaking our spirits it's you know what i'm saying and it's working like i've I've felt exhausted at times because it's like you can't do this you can't do that if you go here, you, I mean, just to, okay, I've worn a mask more in the last 24 hours than I have in the last year, probably. And that's because we're exhausted. <laughs> Vegas is just fucking relentless. I can't come in here. Can't come in here. Can't come here. And when I'm at home, if you say I can't come in here, I tell you to fuck off and I leave. Like I've drawn the line. Like I'm not playing your fucking game anymore. Mm-hmm. And uh, it gets to the point where it's like, oh, dude, I just wanted to fucking take my daughters out for lunch. And now I'm yelling at some random woman. Mm-hmm. And shit gets exhausting. Like it starts to chip away at your soul. Because I'm typically like a pretty happy person. Like I, I have my ups and downs just like anyone. But my overall baseline has been diminished because of this bullshit, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's what they want to do. It's just continuously like, keep prodding and pulling and taking away little bits of freedom at a time little more little more the next will be fucking you can't fly then you can't go across states and it's like before we know it we're fucking almost living in a prison and then how hard is it going to be to mobilize how much harder is it going to be to fucking have like a meaningful impact or get people together to resist like all this shit is fucking calculated dude and but that's the most frustrating part is, you know, it's not we're not dealing with government officials all day long. We're dealing with fucking normal people that the buy the are bullshit. saying they yeah. don't even want to be participating in this yeah. shit, but you are enforcing it. And that's the government doesn't have any fucking power. They're telling you to do shit and you're doing it. And you and I talked about this like all the weekend all blended together, so I don't remember when it was, but it's like yeah, there's a part of us that's like, we need to resist and we need to go here. We need to do this and we need to tell the government to fuck off. And we need to drag these people out of the Capitol and fucking tar and feather them. Like, obviously, there's things that feel like the right thing to do. But the real right thing to do is 100% noncompliance. Going to a rally at the Capitol and waving a sign and, and speaking into a bullhorn sure that kind of shows like okay this many people or stand against you or whatever right but they don't give a fuck about that it doesn't affect you think jay inslee gives a fuck if there's 20 people out front of the capitol or ten thousand? he is not going to change what he is doing because he's not fucking in charge of himself he's just another biden being told what to do being told what to implement he's not going to change because this many people or that many people stand against him. It's not going to change. Protests don't affect change because they don't respect us as people anymore. We're just their fucking subjects. So if we don't start to just have mass noncompliance, they're just going to keep make, they're going to keep fucking smushing us out harder and harder and harder. And I think everybody we talk to on a personal level just like the fucking waitresses today or the people in the stores, even Starbucks, the guy's like mask on. And he pointed at you. And then when you walked up, what did he say? Like, I know, man, he's like, "Ah, I don't like it either. I don't like, you You know know what I'm saying? Like everybody knows this is bullshit, but even what's worse than knowing that the actual mask is bullshit. It's just the constant confrontation between citizen and citizen. Yeah. And I'm not, I, I don't, I don't want to have, like, I would prefer 
like friendly interaction. Of course, dude. You know, yeah. I I'm a like I like to smile. I like to make people laugh. I love to like, you know, I'm witty. I like to make little observations and make a little joke or whatever. And I like seeing pe- strangers laugh. I like, you know, making funny jokes, whatever. And I would much rather do that than threaten you, or or like you know get in a in a in a posture or whatever that energy of just negative, you know, negative energy and, yeah. and an aggressive posture. That's not what I want. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't enjoy that. Or I prefer to be friendly, but the reality of where we're at, I mean, most cops won't stand up and say what they think. That's just true. Sorry if you're a cop, but most cops are not standing up and publicly defying the bullshit. Right. So do we think we're going to have fucking baristas doing it? You think you're going to have fucking hostesses? That chick was a hostess. Her whole job is you walk in and she sees what table is open and walks you to it, right? And this isn't a jab at hostess. Like, I think to make society work, we all have to fucking do our part. And that is a part for typically young people that are probably in college or whatever. And they just, you know, Hey, I go work four hours in the evening and, and seat people. Those people are not going to be like, fuck you. I'm drawing the line here. I'm done with this. You know, even though if everybody did it, it'd be over tomorrow. But so many people are, are controlled by their paycheck and they're controlled by fear and they're controlled by their bosses. And again, dude, it's coming down from like corporate headquarters. You have Starbucks corporate headquarters says this. And then it gets passed down the chain of command through 25 different people before the girl sitting behind the counter taking your drink is saying, hey, put a mask on. And so it's like, I don't know if there's a way out of this, dude. I don't know if there is. Yeah. You know? Mm. Because you know what they would do to her if she said, I'm not going to I'm not going to enforce masks anymore. You're fired. And it's like, hey, that's cool. She stood her ground. But until everybody's willing to do it, it's not going to affect change. Right. And bro, we're fucking a year and a half into this. You need you need people are if people were going to resist it, they'd be resisting it. Yeah, no, for sure. No, I totally agree. And, uh, you know, if and the longer it gets dragged out. And people s- slowly keep giving in. The, you're going to lose all your power. If w- the moment when they say, you know, all all facilities that with 100 people need to get vaccinated, whatever. If everybody just said, nope, not we're not coming to work, yeah. you know, and just walked out. Like that's happened to a couple places where you know 40 percent of the staff fucking left, and they were like, fuck this, like. There is power in numbers. Of course there is, man. You know? And it's not If the military and, and did that, yeah. they would be they would have that would force their hand. And the power when when we say there's power in numbers, I'm not talking about a protest or storming a building. It's literally just going back to your normal life. Yeah. That's it. Go back to your normal life, do things like you used to do it. And if everybody would do that, this would end tomorrow. Like it hasn't happened in my county yet. Cause I'm in Snohomish County, just North of the County line, but King County, which is just beneath us. It's a, it's a fucking 15 minute drive. Gyms cannot allow people in anymore without their vaccine passport. So it's like, first of all, whoever made that fucking rule has, has never been an entrepreneur, has never been a small business owner. Like, what do they expect me to do? How do they expect me to enforce that? I mean, we have 350 members that are in and out. We have two doors. We have two big bay doors that stay open when the business is open. There's no, there is no like standard of seeing, like making people check in and see who's there and who's not there. Like that would be almost impossible. Now we do have check-ins for classes, but the other side of it is, is a lot of people bring their kids or their family members, their wife's watch, like I would need to hire a full-time person to monitor if everybody in the building had a vaccine passport or not. So if, even if I was willing to do it logistically, that's, that's tough because everybody that's there that's working is in a coaching capacity. So, so what the fuck are you even talking about? But second of all, not only like, am I not willing to do it because logistically it sounds like a nightmare, but fuck you. That's yeah. why I'm not going to do it. Dude, I saw this uh, video. It was pretty funny. And it was like, uh, 
the government didn't specify what kind of tests and it just there was a piece of paper on like the entry desk or whatever and it said do you have covid yes or no <laughs> <laughs> yeah i saw that too <laughs> the person just yeah. walked in and wrote no and, and it's the, a, the weekly test right there <laughs> but bro COVID. think about that like we tell people what they have to fucking shove some q-tip into their brain every single week yeah i've done that test dude what and what and, and dude i don't what I, if you get covid you know like i did my test wednesday good i got covid today today whatever you know it's like the none of this shit makes any fucking sense when i flew to hawaii i had to show a negative test within 72 hours and it's like what if i got covid on the way here to the airport you know it's like what have we ever none been, of this shit makes any have we ever been able to sense? stop the spread of, of the flu you know what i'm saying it's fucking yeah the flu went away <laughs> oh, that's right. yeah, yeah. yeah i stand corrected Idiot. we did stop the spread of the flu there's 300 flu deaths last year yeah i just made that up relax i didn't check the fucking fact checker yeah i know uh, all right bro fact checkers are fucking horrible <sighs> we were kind of all over the place today that's all right but it's also two in the morning and we're tired and we were stoned all weekend but uh we're at the two hour mark and i gotta be up in four hours and go to the airport that's so cool. the greg and mitch show is this is not the last you'll hear of us <laughs> not every episode is going to be a fucking slam grand slam but uh i if don't you think were, it was bad no no but if you were disappointed in this week's episode for any reason make sure you go to mitch aguiar two and voice <laughs> your hate and discontent <laughs> yeah I'm, got, just, it, I'm just glad this was your podcast yeah. not mine <laughs> <laughs> do you got anything else you want to put out or direct people anywhere or? um yeah visit uh, massive supplements.com check out our smashing greens smashing reds and our fasting challenges if you're uh, up for a mental toughness uh discipline challenge and you know want to uh, shed some LBs and shred up and stuff like that. It's definitely a, a unique, cool challenge. Check it out. Massive sub M A S F supplements.com. And then, uh, also check out adopt a cop BJJ.org. If you are interested in donating or learning more about adopt a cop BJJ. And, uh, yeah, again, thank you to high rollers BJJ for having us and hosting our tournament. Thanks, Jake Shields, uh, for taking the match. Uh, good time. And uh, thank you, Greg, for coming out as well. And It's uh, always fun, man. I appreciate being included in these trips. Yeah, man, definitely. Uh, I, I enjoy the regular, you know, visits that we get. And uh, we always get into some fun shit. And, you know, we're definitely going to do a podcast we've decided every time we link up. So, so like it or not, the Greg and Mitch show is here to stay. There we go.